Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita every Sunday evening. I'm told we're reading Chaitanya Charitamrita, so we're on Antya Lila, chapter 5, entitled Ramananda Rai instructs Prajumna Mishra. Okay, so we're reading the section where uh, Swarup Damodar is instructing uh, a poet who wrote a drama about Lord Jagannath. So in the drama, the, the person who wrote this drama, he compared Lord Chaitanya with Lord Jagannath. So he had made some mistakes in writing the drama. He had made the mistake of rasa basa, conflicting mellows. And uh, Swarup Damodar is explaining the faults. So we are reading text number 119. 119? Okay. Purnasad Aishwarya Chaitanya Swayam Bhagavan Tanre Kailik Shudra Jiva Spulinga Samana. Translation. You have calculated Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, full in six opulences, to be on the level of an ordinary living being. Instead of knowing Him as the Supreme Fire, you have accepted Him as a spark. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In the Upanishads it is said, Yatakner Vishpulinga Vyucharanti. The living entities are like sparks of fire. And His Lordship, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is considered the original great fire. When we hear the Shruti Vakya, or message from the Vedas, we should understand the distinction between the Supreme Lord Krishna and the living entities. A person under the control of the external energy, however, cannot understand that distinction. Such a person cannot understand that the Supreme Person is the original great fire, whereas the living entities are simply small, fragmental parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <coughs> As Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita 15.7, Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke Jiva Bhuta Sanatana Manashastani Indriyani Prakriti Stani Karshati The living entities in this conditioned world are my eternal fragmental parts. Due to conditioned life, they are struggling very hard with the six senses, which include the mind. There is a distinction between the body and the soul of the material existing living being. But because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Lord Jagannath do not possess material bodies, there is no distinction between their bodies and souls. On the spiritual platform, body and soul are identical. There is no distinction between them. As stated in Srimad Bhagavatam 1.11.38, Ekad Ishanam Ishashya Prakriti Stopi Tadgunai Na Yujyate Sat Atma Yata Buddhis Tat Ashraya. This is the divinity of the personality of Godhead. He is not affected by the qualities of material nature, even though he is in contact with them. Similarly, the devotees who have taken shelter of the Lord cannot be influenced by the material qualities. His Lordship, the Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna, is unaffected by the influence of the three modes of material nature. Indeed, His devotees are also 
unpolluted by the influence of the external energy because they engage in the service of his lordship. Even the very body of a devotee becomes spiritualized just as an iron rod put into fire becomes as qualified as fire because it becomes red hot and will immediately burn anything it touches. Therefore, the poet from Bengal committed a great offense by treating Lord Jagannath's body and Lord Jagannath, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, as two different entities, material and spiritual, as if the Lord were an ordinary living being. The Lord is always the master of the material energy. Therefore, he is not doomed to be covered by the material energy like an ordinary living entity. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Chatsur Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Vistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupakatamayam Tadati Swapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Yatapada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Stya Shri Rupam Sakrajatam Sahagana Ragnatan Vitam Tam Sajevam Sarvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakanitam Stya He Krishna Karana Sindhu Dinna Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhano Sate Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vanchakaupatarupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhaye Bhacha Patitanam Pavanevyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Kadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So Lord Chaitanya took sannyas at the age of 24 and at the request of his mother, Sachi Mata, Lord Chaitanya took up residence in Jagannath Puri. Mother Sachi desired her son to stay in Jagannath Puri rather than go to Vrindavan, because Vrindavan is a long way from Mayapur. And people coming from Vrindavan to Mayapur are not many, but regularly people are coming and going between Jagannath Puri and Mayapur. So re she requested her son that you have taken sannyas, you are going away from our home, but kindly don't go too far away. If you will just stay in Jagannath Puri, then I will be able to get news of your activities. So Lord Chaitanya went to Jagannath Puri and of course for some six years he was wandering around India, delivering the chanting of the Holy Name and converting people to Vaishnavism. <coughs> and then he came back to reside in Jagannath Puri. Now, of course, Lord Chaitanya was very well known to the people of India. He was very famous. His fame was very great. He was a great, he was respected by people all over India. And uh, many people would come to see him. And often people would write some poem or write some drama glorifying the Lord. 
but often people would uh, make some mistake in their dramatic presentation. They would do something wrong. You, they would not present the philosophy correctly. When we look at different philosophical systems and different so-called holy men, they, do, they may look impressive for some time, but when we look closer and we study more of their philosophy, we will often see it tinged with Mayavada, the idea that ultimately there's no personal God, or that we're all God, or that God has a material body. So this was very disturbing to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, because Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is presenting a very personal philosophy. And one of the principles of Lord Chaitanya's teachings is to completely defeat the Mayavada philosophy. So when people would come with these different philosophical deviations, Lord Chaitanya would get very upset. So the people, the devotees who were residing with Lord Chaitanya, they would not, they would be very careful about allowing people to come and read their poetry or read their dramas to Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because they didn't want to make Lord Chaitanya upset. They didn't, you know, they didn't want some foolish person to come in and speak some nonsense in front of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So before Lord Chaitanya would hear anything written by someone, it would be first of all heard by Lord Chaitanya's secretary. Lord Chaitanya's secretary was a person called Swarup Damodar Goswami. And Swarup Damodar Goswami was also a very learned and elevated devotee. And he could immediately detect if there was any mistake in the philosophical presentations. So he would hear first of all, and if Swarup Damodar would approve it, then it would be given, then it would be all right to present to Lord Chaitanya. So in this particular case here, it's recorded in this Chaitanya Charitamrita, there was one poet came from Bengal and he had written a drama about Lord Jagannath and also Lord Chaitanya. And he was comparing Lord Jagannath to Lord Chaitanya. But in his presentation, he made some philosophical mistakes. And he presented the idea that the body of Lord Jagannath is different from the spirit of Lord Jagannath. Now, Srila Prabhupada points out in the purport that in our case, our body is different from our soul. We have a material body, but the soul is spiritual. The body is material energy, and the soul is the superior energy, the spiritual energy. There's a difference between the body and the soul. Of course, this is difficult for materialistic people to understand. In the modern times, people are very materialistic and they identify with the body. But the body is simply the dress. Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Vachamsi Jarnani Navari Grinati Naroparani Navari Rani Vihayajanani Anyarani Just like we give up the old garments and put on new clothes, similarly we give up the old body and we take a new body. The soul is the same. Nowadays, you can say you, you give up one car and you give up the old car, you take the new car, right? <laughs> You're more involved with cars than clothes. You spend all the money on cars. 
So anyway, car is also like the body. We're attached to the body. This, bo this body is material energy, but the soul is spiritual. It's a particle of the Supreme Lord, the life-giving force within the body. <coughs> so, in the drama, this poet had made a terrible mistake because he had explained that the body of Lord Jagannath is different from the soul. Now, our body is different from the soul, but in the spiritual world, when you come to the spiritual platform, then the, the, the soul and the body are both spiritual. In the case of Lord Jagannath and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there is no difference between the body and the soul. Because the body is also spiritual. Prabhupada gives the example that when the body of a devotee is engaged in the service of Lord Krishna, then the body becomes spiritualized. Just like this microphone, it becomes energized when it's connected to the power supply. There has to be the power, the electrical source to give light, to make this microphone work. So this microphone is energized from the power station. In the same way, when our soul is connected to the Supreme Soul, Lord Krishna, through the process of yoga, then our body is also spiritualized. The body becomes pure, free of all designations. That is a sign of purification, that we give up all designations. Sarvopadi vinirmuktam tatparadvena nirmalam. Rishi Kesha Rishi Kena Sevanam Bhakti Ruchate. Right? The highest devotional service. When we are when we are freed of all of these designations. But that is a difficult thing to give up because we're all attached. We designate ourselves in so many ways. We designate ourselves as being a Hindu, or being a, being a, a we may designate ourselves as being an educated person. You know, people put letters after the name, B.S.C., M.A., Ph.D., like that. You see, these are all designations <coughs> of the body. We designate ourselves as being young or old as being male or female, bodily designations keep us in the ignorance of material life. It is difficult to get free from these designations, but we can do it through the process of devotional service, which begins with hearing. We have to hear about our proper, our actual spiritual nature. We have to be reminded again and again. We have to remind each other of our spiritual position. Con we are conditioned by the material energy. Con due to conditioned life, we have the de we have certain uh, defects. Like, we make mistakes, imperfect senses, subject to illusion, and the propensity to cheat. These, are, these defects are all there in the conditioned souls. There are two kinds of souls. There are the conditioned souls and the liberated souls. Liberated souls, Jivan Mukta. They have, they have transcended the modes of material nature. They have transcended that 
conditioned stage of existence by which we identify with the body and with the material world. What is that conditioning? It is simply the illusion that we are the enjoyer. We're thinking this world is for our enjoyment. We do not understand our actual position in this world. Actually, it is Lord Krishna, the Supreme Lord, who is the enjoyer. All others are his servants. But out of ignorance, we are thinking, I am this body, and because we think I am this body, we think this is for my enjoyment. This is mine, aham and mamiti, right? These are the bondage, this is the bondage of conditioned life. And when we're in this kind of ignorance, then there's a big difference between our body and our soul. So material world means you have a material body. You have a gross body and a subtle body. Subtle body means the mind, the intelligence, and the ego, false ego, that ahankar, which keeps us tied up in the material energy. So, to get freed of the material energy is possible. Lord Krishna gives us a very simple instruction in Bhagavad Gita how we can get free. He said, Daviyesha Gunamaye Mama Maya Duratyaya Mameva Ye Prapadyante Maya Mitam Tarantite. He's saying, This material energy is very difficult to overcome. But if someone surrenders unto me, they can easily cross beyond this. And so we have to understand the nature of the material energy that to get free of this material conditioning is not a very easy thing. Because we have been in this material world a very long time. So our conditioning goes very deep. To get free, therefore, of this material energy is going to take some time. And it's going to take also some effort on our own part. It's not just, you know, it's not, you don't just pay the money and you get, you know, the nowadays we think you can get, you can buy it, right? Pay the money and you get it. Or sign the contract. No, it's not such a small thing. We have to, we have to actually give up the desire to enjoy this material world separate from Krishna. So long as we are thinking that we can enjoy the world without Krishna, <coughs> we can never actually surrender to Krishna. So Lord Krishna said, you can get free of the material energy, but you have to surrender to Him. We have to recognize Him as a proprietor. We have to recognize His position. And we have to also recognize our own position in relation to Him. Wanting to be the master is the nature of conditioned life. We, we like to think that we can be the supreme. It's sometimes difficult for people to accept that we are simply the servant. But we should understand there's more pleasure in being the servant than in being the master. We want to enjoy, we can enjoy by being the servant of Krishna, by allowing ourselves to be engaged in the service of Krishna. So the Krishna consciousness movement is for that purpose, to keep everyone engaged in the service of Krishna by hearing and chanting. These pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are very instructive for us because they show us that the qualification to understand Lord Krishna is not material. 
Now this scholar who wrote this drama, who was a poet, you know, materially he was qualified. He was well educated, he could write nice poetry, but he did not understand the actual position of Lord Jagannath and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But by the mercy of Swarup Damodar, he could be enlightened. So the, the, we should understand the qualification to understand Krishna is not material. Sometimes we ask people about the process of knowledge, being a jnani. By jnana yoga, do you make advancement very quickly? Will we make advancement very quick by jnana? No. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Bahunam Yamanamanti Yanapamam Prabhajanti. After many births and deaths, when one is actually in knowledge, then he surrenders unto me. So we should understand by the process of knowledge, you make advancement slowly, very slowly. But by devotional service, we can know Krishna very quickly. But how to get that devotion of service? Bhakti is a rare thing. It is, it is not such an easy thing to get devotion. It is very rare. One of the characteristics of bhakti is rarely achieved. Why is it rarely achieved? Because Lord Krishna becomes controlled by the devotee. When we become fully surrendered to Krishna, then Krishna becomes obliged to look after us and to maintain us. Right. Krishna says, Kunti apriti janehi nami bhakta pranashati. Krishna's promise, he will protect his devotee. And Krishna promises, Yoga Kshema Bahamiyaham. He said, for one who is meditating on me, who is always remembering me, for him I carry what he likes, I preserve what he has. Krishna has a relationship with his devotees. He's very concerned to maintain them, to look after them. Therefore, Krishna does not easily give that right. Just like Lord Krishna had to become the chariot driver for Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra. Now, because Krishna, is, Krishna had promised he would not fight in the battle of Kurukshetra, but at the same time when Arjuna's life was threatened, then Krishna has to break his promise because Krishna wants to protect his devotees. Krishna cares more about his devotees then he does about his own promise. His own promise is not so important to him as his devotees. So Krishna broke his promise to protect Arjuna. And similarly also, Lord Krishna had to become a messenger on behalf of Maharaj Yudhisthira. <laughs> Maya is coming. <laughs> Very difficult to surrender to Krishna. <laughs> Maya is so powerful. So Maya is very attractive. Of course, we dovetail it. We play Hare Krishna tunes on the mobile phone. So. Lord Krishna had to become the messenger for Maharaj Yudhisthira. Maharaj Yudhisthira wanted to avoid the battle of Kurukshetra. So a letter was prepared to give to Dhritarashtra and to Duryodhana that let's settle this without war. Somehow we can set all this up without having the war. You just have to do give some village or something. Make some, let's make some agreement. Let's avoid the war. Lord Krishna had to go there with the letter. And of course at that time when he went there, Duryodhana was also trying to capture Krishna. 
and take him a prisoner. Of course, that time Krishna showed the universal form and Duryodhana realized he couldn't arrest Krishna. But Krishna had to do all of this on behalf of Maharaj Yudhisthira. He was put into this situation because of his, his um, eagerness to reciprocate with his devotees. He knew that Maharaj Yudhisthira was his pure devotee and Lord Krishna was obliged to be his messenger. So Lord Krishna does not freely give that kind of service, that opportunity to everyone. Lord Krishna therefore does not readily give pure devotion. But the devotees of Krishna are more kind than Krishna. They know the, 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 the desire of the Lord. And the devotees of Krishna, they distribute the message of Krishna. They distribute devotion to everyone. So here you see in this situation, this uh, Brahmana who had written this drama and made some mistakes, made some offenses in the course of trying to glorify Lord Krishna and trying to glorify Lord Chaitanya, he actually made a great offense because he was saying that the body of Lord Chaitanya is different from his soul and the body of Jagannath is different from his soul. In other words, he was saying body of Lord Jagannath was material. He said the body of Jagannath is wood. Actually, the body of Jagannath is not wood. It's Daru Brahman, right? It's spiritual. The body of the deity, when we see the form of the deity, we may say, oh, the deity is made of this wood or the deity is made of stone. Or, but actually, the deity is not made of material elements. Acharya Vishnu Shiladir Gurushu Vaishnava Jati Bud Yashava Narakisa. There's a verse in scriptures that said that one who looks at the form of the deity and considers the body of the deity to be material, to be made of material elements. Hare Krishna. Please keep your voice inside. silence more. Please check all of you check once. Thank you, please. So a person who considers the body of the deity to be material, such a person is a resident in hell. And the same is true if we consider a Vaishnava to be an ordinary person who takes birth and dies. We may look with our material vision and it may appear that the Vaishnava is an ordinary person and it may appear that he has taken birth, it may appear that he is dying, but we should understand there's a big difference between the devotee and the ordinary person. Because the devotee, the Vaishnava, has surrendered their life to Lord Krishna. So their body is not material. So when they die, it is not like the death of an ordinary person. The death of the devotee is very on a very different level. The devotee is simply giving up one body to go to serve Krishna in another place. It is going on under the arrangement of Krishna, under the internal potency of the Lord. Mahatmanas to Mamparta Daivim Prakritim Ashrata. The Mahatmas, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine energy. Therefore, when the devotee dies, their death is not like the death of any ordinary person. It is the arrangement of Krishna to take them out of one situation <coughs> to bring them to some other place so that they can take up some service to Krishna in some other situation. So very important that we should not be under the spell of our material senses, looking at the deities. We may think the deity looks like some statue. One will come and see the deity, and if we use our eyes, we're thinking, oh, it's a statue 
Oh, it's made of wood. Oh, it's made of stone. We're using our material eyes to see. But we have to see the deity not with our material eyes. We have to see with the eyes of the scriptures. We have to see with spiritual vision. And then we can actually understand the form of the Lord. It's not material, but it is such an ananda. The body of the Lord, the body of the deity is also spiritual energy, such an ananda. And the same is true for the body of the devotee. When we are fully engaged in Krishna's service, our bodies are also spiritualized. Therefore it is said, Sadhu ma jiva ma mara. Uh, oh, uh, it is Rajaputra charan jiva ma jiva rishi putraka. Jiva va mara va sadhu vyadi ma jiva ma mara. Jiva Goswami has given a nice example. He's telling about four young men. There is the, the king's son. So, some astrologer came to the town one day and four young men came, they wanted to hear from the astrologer. The first one was the king's son. So he was blessed. Rajaputra Charanjiva. You don't die. And then the second was Mahjiva Rishiputraka. The son of the Rishi, may your death come soon. And Jiva va marava sadhu, for the sadhu, for the devotee, son, doesn't matter if you live or if you die. And then the butcher, son, <coughs> don't live and don't die. Right? So the people were a bit, un they were puzzled that what is the meaning of this? So the astrologer explained that Rajaputra Charanjiva, don't die. Because he's a king's son, so he's enjoying a lot of wealth and a lot of freedom. He can do whatever he likes. Nobody can tell him, you can't do this. He can simply say, I am the king's son. I can do whatever I like. And so, he will do many bad things. So better you don't die. Because when you die, then you'll suffer a lot. So, better you live forever. And the Rishi's son, the son of the Rishi, is living in the forest with his father and together they're eating only fruits and roots, whatever grows wild in the forest, they live on that. They don't have any feast, they don't have any ghee or cow's milk, they're living very simply, doing a lot of austerity. But when he dies, he will get a very good birth in the next life because he has not done any harm to anyone. He's been living a very simple, pure life. So in the next life, he will get a very good birth. So he was blessed. May your death come soon. And then for the devotee's son, does not matter if you live or if you die. Because the devotee's son every day comes, he eats prasadam, he hears the holy name, he chants, he's seeing the deities. And when he dies, next life, he will continue his devotion. He will go on to serve Krishna some other place. But the butcher's son, don't live and don't die. Because he's living in hell. And when he dies, he will have to go to hell. So, this... Uh, Jiva Goswami gave this example to help us to understand how to make proper use of this human life because it's very important for us, it will determine our future. The acts and the consciousness which we have today, will, our body will develop in the future. Just like the body we have now is the result of what we have done in the past. So the same way, we are preparing for the next body. What kind of body do we want in the next life? Now the best body is to get a spiritual body. A body which won't take birth 
and won't suffer old age and disease and death, right? The miseries of life. Janma mrityu jaravyadi dukkha dosh anudarsana. These are the problems of conditioned life. You take a material body and you suffer. Begins with birth. Birth is not a pleasant experience. When children are born, they're not born smiling. Right? They come out of the womb crying. They have been suffering. It's very painful experience to have to take birth and then growing up is also not an easy thing. To have to grow up, you have to learn how to walk, you have to learn the language, you have to go to school again, go through everything, oh, so many things, so much trouble. And then the troubles don't end when you grow up. There's still trouble, right? Can you think, because you're adults, there's no trouble now? The troubles are only in childhood? No, adulthood, there's also a lot of trouble, right? So many problems, maintaining the life, looking after the family, maintaining our own self, keeping healthy, still diseases there, and then old age comes quickly, and then death. We have to worry about all these things. So intelligent people will think how to get out from this world. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, those great souls who are yogis in devotion, they never return to this material world because they know it to be a temporary place of misery. Mamopaicha punar janman tukala yama shasvatam napno anti mahatmana samsadim paramam yata. Yeah. Dukalaya. <coughs> Dukalaya, right? Just like Pustakalaya, place of books. Himalaya, place of snow. So Lord Krishna describes this world, Dukalaya, a place of suffering. Of course, we're trying very hard to enjoy. We get some little bits of pleasure here in the material world. But that happiness of the material world and Chaitanya Charitamrita, the example is given, is that just like in the medieval times, people were tortured. They would have a, a long plank of wood, and on the end of the plank of wood, the person would be tied to the end of the wood, and then he would be put in the water, dropped into the water, submerged below the water, and he would be sub submerged in the bottom of the river for a long time. And then after being in the bottom of the river, then they would bring him up. And then he would be able to breathe. But only for a moment and then back in the water again. So, pleasure in the material world is like that. A lot of suffering. And then a little bit of a few seconds of pleasure. A little happiness. Then more suffering. Like that. So much difficulty to find pleasure to find happiness in the material world. It is this, Lochan Das has written that one nice song, Bajahari Manu, he says, Chapala Sukha Labari, right? Chapala Sukha, the happiness. Edina, uh, how, how does it go? Bajahure Mana Srinandanandana Bajahari Pada Dulapa manava janama satsange tarahoye pacho sindure. So, Mochan Dasta Kursi, Chapala Sukha, working very hard, serving wicked and miserly people. For what? For Chapala Sukha. Do you have that experience? <laughs> I think many people, many in the material world, Bochan Das Thakur, he described it 500 years ago. 500 years ago it was the same situation. People were working, serving wicked and miserly people for 
just some flickering pleasure. So, uh, just as a drop of water sits on the lotus leaf, rolls back into the water. The better we use this life to become Krishna conscious, to get freed of this material body. Right? If when we give up this body, we have to take birth again, means we failed. Just like if your, your child is studying at school, and if they fail, then they have to do the whole year again. Right? They have to repeat. You have to pay all the fees again. It's a, such a waste of time. So the same way, we have this human life. And if we are not successful in this human life, if we are not going back to Godhead, we have to come back again. Take birth again. We have that one book, you may have read that one book, published by the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust. It's called, Coming Back, The Science of Reincarnation. The last chapter is called, Don't Come Back. Mm -hmm. right? Don't come back. If we come back into this world, we have not made the proper use of the human life. Of course, human life is the opportunity to get up. And we are in the best place. Bharatvarsh, on the earth planet, it's a prime opportunity to get freed from the material world, from the world of birth and death. Even the demigods want to take birth on this planet. Because in the higher planets, all the demigods, all the devas, they have to wait till the end of the lifetime of Brahma before they can think about going back to Godhead. They cannot go back now. But on this planet, on this earth planet, the opportunity is there. That Lord Chaitanya has come to show everyone, to make it very easy for everyone, how to go back to Godhead. This, this is the wonders, this is the mercy of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This very easily, very quickly, we can be freed from this material world. So, it, it's, we, we often do not understand how fortunate we are, how rare it is to have this opportunity. The, uh, and it's only on this planet, on this particular time, in this Kali Yuga, that even the demigods want to come here to take birth. Now, uh, there, are, there are other things about the Kali Yuga. Of course, we know Kali Yuga is generally considered <coughs> inauspicious. There's a, a lot of problems. People are lazy, misguided, unlucky, always disturbed. They say in the Kali Yuga, there's some, if you just think about doing good, you get the benefit of it. Even if you, if you just think about it. In other ages, you had to do it before you got the benefit. But in the Kali Yuga, if you just think about doing good, you get the benefit. And if you, if you think bad, you don't suffer. But if you actually, you have to do something before you suffer the reaction. In other ages, if you thought bad things, you suffer. But in this Kali Yuga, if you just think bad, you don't get any reaction. But if you, you have to do something before you get reaction. So these are some special features of the Kali Yuga. But the main feature of the Kali Yuga is that Simply by chanting the holy name, by kirtan, we can get all perfection. What was not possible in the other ages is possible in the Kali Yuga. Actually, in every age there was kirtan, but people were generally more they thought, oh, well, the kirtan, that's too easy for us. We need something more difficult. They thought, you know, chanting the holy name. Oh, you know, we want, you know, we want to look more spiritual than that. 
you, we read in the Bhagavatam about the prachetas going to the bottom of the ocean and meditating. You know, people like that, they, they would do things like that. Kardama Muni meditating in the forest 40,000 years. So people would do that kind of thing rather than chant the holy name. And, but in every age there was chanting of the holy name. But in the Kali Yuga, there's only the chanting of the holy name. There is no meditation. There is no yagya. The temple worship also is not the process for the Kali Yuga. So you may question, well, why have we got so much temple worship here? Temple worship, we are doing very basic temple worship. We're not doing very elaborate worship of the deity here. Because deity worship was for the previous age. We do some simple worship here. Why? Because it's important for our purity, for our <coughs> regulation. Without having deity worship, then we won't be very regulated. We won't have you know, like we have kirtan every night, we have RT. That regulation is important. Every morning, <coughs> 5 o'clock, we do Mongol RT. That regulation helps to keep us uh, purified. And also, cleanliness. By worshipping the deity, we give much more attention to cleanliness. You'll see in other places where they don't do <coughs> deity worship, they don't keep the temple very clean. It, and they're also not very clean themselves, they're not pure in their habits. But worshipping the deity, people are very careful to keep themselves pure and clean. So deity worship is there for that purpose. And one more reason why we worship the deity is that we can know God as a person. That's important for us, understanding that God is a person. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in India and he went to Udupi. When he went to Udupi, he saw the Madhvas at Tatvavadis, he saw them worshipping the deity of Udupi Krishna. And he was very pleased to see their worship of the deity. They worshipped the deity in a very proper manner. They worshipped the deity as a person, not just simply some statue. Now we often see temples, just like here in Bahrain, there may be so many temples. But people who have, they may put some form of the Lord, but they don't worship it as a deity. They simply do some murti puja. Murti puja is different from the worship of the deity. The deity is worshipped as a person, not just some statue where we offer some worship to. It's a very different consciousness. So Lord Chaitanya saw in Madhvacharya when they were worshipping Udupi Krishna, they saw that they were worshipping the deity in a very, very personal manner. And that's why Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation in the line of Madhvacharya. And we are continuing also the worship of the deity in this way. We worship the deity as a person. Lord Jagannath is a person. Right? He can see. He can talk. The deity is not just some statue. There are many examples. We have Shakti Gopal, the deity there, and Bhubaneswar, and then you have Shira Kora Gopinath, the deity who stole the sweet rice. You have these examples, different deities. Raghunanda Thakur, he had one deity also. He would eat. He ate the ladu, right? He ate the prasada. So Krishna is a person. Is your deity eating? <laughs> is, are you talking to your deity? No. There was that one devotee in uh, the one temple <coughs> in South India, in the Sri Vaishnava line where the devotee was offering the arti and he was talking to the deity. Hmm? Varadraj, yeah, Varadraj, yeah. right. So, famous deity there. And the devotee was talking to the deity. And the other devotees, all the other devotees knew, 
he's talking to the deity. So one of them, he asked, he said, when you talk to the deity, can you ask him, am I going to get liberation? Because naturally he wants to know, am I going to get liberation at the end of this one? And so he, the man, the, the devotee talked to the deity and the deity said, yes, that devotee will get liberated. So then the devotee asked, what about me, will I also get liberated? And the deity said, no, because you have not served my devotees. You're only serving me. You're not serving the devotees. And so he became very serious. He said, oh, this is very serious. I'm not going to get liberated. I'm not serving the devotees. He tried to serve the devotees. Nobody would let him serve. Oh, I'm not taking service from you. You're a great devotee. Nobody, he couldn't give service to anyone. Everybody knew him. And so he went very far away where nobody knew him. And he disguised himself. He put on very simple dress. And then he found some Vaishnava. He had a herd of cows. And secretly he went and he washed the cows. And he cleaned the cows. And he fed the cows. He took care of the cows. Without the person knowing about it. This way, somehow, secretly, he was able to give some service to a Vaishnava. And in this way he was able to please, please the Lord, please the Lord, so that he could get liberation. So a very important point though, it's not only serving the deity, we have to serve the devotees, giving service to the devotee. And who should we serve? We should serve Srila Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada is the greatest devotee. The serve Srila Prabhupada's movement. If you are doing service for the Krishna Consciousness movement, then that is service to Srila Prabhupada and service to the devotees. So if you are all helping to distribute Krishna Consciousness, to give everyone some opportunity of awakening their consciousness of Krishna, that is very pleasing to Krishna. We all have a lot of work to do. There is so much need of Krishna consciousness in this Kali Yuga. And we know, we said, this, we have a short life. We don't have a lot of time. We have to make use of every moment to serve Krishna, to give the holy name, to distribute Krishna consciousness. First make ourselves Krishna conscious and then give it to others. Right? First we have to become Krishna conscious. But the more we are giving the mercy of Krishna, the more you get the mercy. That's the idea. Don't worry so much about our own self, but whatever we know, whatever little bit we know, if we distribute that and try to give that and share it with others, then our own realization will increase more and more. So this is the Krishna conscious philosophy. Don't look, we give the example, the glass, somebody said, my glass is half empty. Someone else said, my glass is half full. They both have the same amount. Someone's thinking theirs is empty, someone thinks the glass is full. So it's how we see our own consciousness is important. Whatever we know, it's more than what other people know. We have to share it with them. We have to be willing to give that message of Krishna. So Prabhupada encouraged us to work, think in this way, to try to think how to expand Krishna consciousness. By the grace of Krishna, He is allowing you here in Bari to do so many nice preaching. In the recent times, I am getting reports about the changes with the government and how the devotees are helping so much in the government and at the same time <coughs> preaching Krishna consciousness. So this is Krishna's arrangement, giving you all more and more opportunity to distribute Krishna consciousness. <coughs> Everybody in Bari will come to know Hare Krishna. Right? <laughs> If somebody's in Bari and they never heard of Hare Krishna, there's something wrong, right? <laughs> you could make Bari in the first Krishna conscious kingdom. <laughs>
Prabhupada wanted that also in Mauritius. He had plans like that. There was, you know, Mauritius, Prabhupada went there to Mauritius. He said, make the whole island Krishna conscious. So you have a nice opportunity to do wonderful service for Krishna. Okay, any question? Hare Krishna? Any question? Yes, Prabhupada. Thanks for the next class, Maharaj. One question, Maharaj. You mentioned about looking at the deity with a spiritual vision, but we're not at that stage, so how do we really deal with the deities? Well, spiritual vision means seeing through the eyes of the scriptures. When you say you're not at that stage, what do you mean? You're, you must be at that stage. You're hearing the scriptures regularly. So when we come to see the deity, we have to see the deity according to the scriptural statements. We have to understand that the, de the deity is a transcendental form of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. It's like that. Just like when we look at a person, if we want to see with the eye of knowledge, then we should see them as a spirit soul. We should not simply see the external features. We should not simply see the body. But we should see the soul. We should see the Lord in the heart of everyone. Right? This is spiritual vision. We see everyone equally. In Bhagavad Gita it is described, Vijabhinaya Sampani Brahmani Gavi Hastani Suni Chaiva Swapaki Cha Samo Pandita Darshana. So seeing with an equal vision, Paramatma vision, the elephant, the cow, the dog, the dog eater, the learned and gentle Brahmana, we see everyone equal because we see in everyone there is Paramatma, there is a super soul. So that is seeing through the eyes of scriptures. Of course, we don't deal with them all equally. We don't deal with an elephant the same way you deal with a Brahman. There's a difference. But we see them equally in terms of the, the scriptures, that they're all souls in different bodies. In the same way, when we come to see the deity, we should understand the deity is the transcendental form of the Lord who has appeared in these material elements for the purpose of us that we can serve him. He has entered into the material elements and he has made them spiritual by his presence. And he has done this so that we can work, serve him, so that we can properly see him and understand him and render service to him. So this is spiritual vision. We say the Archa Vigraha, right? The form of the Lord, Archa Vigraha. The form of the Lord for worship. The elements of the deity may be material, but these material elements are spiritualized because the Lord enters into these elements at the request of the devotee. The pure devotee invites the Lord to appear in these forms. And this is how we are able to see the Lord in the deity. So like that, we have to see these things through our eye of knowledge. It is said a dog sees everything by its nose. He comes and smells everything. Conditioned souls, they see with their eyes. But the devotee, the learned devotees, they will see with the eye of knowledge. They see through the scriptures. They don't just depend on their material vision. So this is spiritual vision. Yeah, we, we have to constant. Just like, you know, we're, we're coming to the temple. So we come in the temple, we learn to offer our obeisances. Certain behaviors are there in the temple, which you may not have when you go to work. You come in the temple, you know, and you offer obeisances, you offer some prayers, because you know it's a temple. Why do you do that? Because we're, we have the eye of knowledge, we're understanding things on the basis of the scriptures. It's different. 
And so like that, that same way we look at the deity, we see the deity. We should see it with spiritual knowledge. Understand the position of the deity. So again, you can have that spiritual vision. You, you are hearing, you know, the deity is not material. The deity is eternity, knowledge and bliss. And the scriptural injunction is there. I give it Atari Vishnu Shiva Dia Guru Shu Vaishnavi Chati Bhuti Yashya Vanaraki Sa. If we see the deity as being material, then we are a resident of hell. We don't want to be in hell. Right? But if we see the deity, if we actually see the deity, then our, our home is Goloka. Not hell. Bhakti Vinod Thakur said, Yetina grehe bhajana deke grehe ti kolokamaya. That my home, when I worship the deity in my home, my home becomes goloka. Because the Lord is in goloka. He doesn't leave goloka, he's always there. So the home is also goloka. If Krishna is there in your home, your home is also goloka. So we come to the temple, we should also understand this is Goloka, this is the spiritual world. We have to have that consciousness. Come to the temple, it's a different place, a different atmosphere. It's not like your office, not like your car. This is Krishna's home. <coughs> we feel the presence of Krishna. You can feel the different atmosphere. And if you cannot feel it, then you have to remember it by hearing. We have to be reminded. We have to hear. And this way we awaken the spiritual knowledge. We, for, we have that forgetful tendency. We forget very easily. Forgetting Krishna since time immemorial, we are forced to take birth repeatedly in so many different species of life. So now we have come to this human form of life and the association of devotees. We have a prime opportunity to finish up this business <coughs> go back home, back to God. This should be our mood, this should be our aspiration. That let me give this one life for the service of Krishna. So many lifetimes we have had in the material world trying to enjoy, trying to be happy, serving the senses. Sometimes we have been demigods, Sometimes we've been kings, sometimes we've been dogs and hogs, we've had so many different bodies. Now we have come to this position. We have the human body, we have the association of devotees, we have the opportunity to cross over the ocean of material existence. We have to take full advantage. So spiritual knowledge is there. We have to hear to be reminded. Just like you bump, you bump your head, you lose the memory. You forget everything. How to get the memory back? When somebody comes out after being in a coma, they've been unconscious for a long time, and they come out of the coma, they don't remember anything. They don't remember. You have to be told, oh, this is your wife. Oh, this is your family, you have to be introduced to everyone. You have to be, you go home, this is your home. You don't know, you can't remember anything. So in the same way, we don't know our spiritual identity. We've forgotten our position in the spiritual world. And we're <coughs> identifying, we're in this dream 
right? We have our daydreams. I am this body. I am a worker. I am here in this body. And I am a Malayali. I am whatever. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're forgetting who we are. Right? We have to come out of this dream. The real, con the real self is the spirit soul, part and partial of Krishna. And we have an eternal relationship with him. So we come to the temple to be reminded of this. When we come to see the deity, this is my Lord. I am his servant. I am a tiny servant. So like that, when we come to the temple like that, then we can revive our consciousness of Krishna. Consciousness is there. We have to first. We have to become conscious, and then we become Krishna conscious. Right? So first, being conscious, being conscious that I'm here. I'm in this material body, and I'm having difficulties, a lot of problems, a lot of troubles in the material world. It's not a pleasant place. Why I should try to be happy here? Let me just make a little effort to try to achieve the supreme destination, to go back to Krishna. God helps those who help themselves. If you want to help yourself, surrender to Krishna. Okay, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Jaya! Jaya!